So today we don't have a normal podcast segment. We actually have something quite interesting that I just recently unearthed and I spent the day kind of cobbling it together for you guys. Uh, Transformer Slag Podcast has been around since 2009. We've been around for a very long time. And throughout the years, we had a lot of footage and stuff and interviews and all kinds of different things that sometimes just didn't make the cutting room floor got lost for one reason or another and we did an interview at tfcon 2009 i believe it was april it was april of 2009 with derek wyatt and uh we were just kind of like chilling outside the uh the dealer room when it was being set up on the friday i remember like we stole some one of those high tables from the bar and we're kind of just doing some little setup and testing some things with the podcast, do a mobile recording as best as we could with the limited technology we had of 2009. And uh, Derek showed up, he came from the airport and everything, and we were talking, and then we're like, you know, a little crowd started to, to gather while we were talking, and then we thought, hey, why don't we, why don't we record something? Do a little, you know, recording. And we did a little 10 minute, just little quick thing, and. And it just, it's, what sucked was that the, the tech that we were using at the time was not the best. Derek's recording came out pretty good. Mine was absolutely crappy and garbage. And it just kind of got cut and left on the cutting room floor and we never did anything with it. Fast forward to a couple of years later and uh, you know now we have some footage of that recording. Actual, someone recorded a video footage of it. So you mix kind of the audio quality with that one and yeah, mine's still garbage and I'm gonna put subtitles for whenever I talk because the garbage, the, the garbage vo vocals aren't really that good. But um, a little bit of a cool little interview from, from Derek who's no longer with us and it's, it's such a funny interview because I didn't plan it, but somehow we were located in front of the woman's washroom because that's what was next to the entrance of TFCon's dealer room. I didn't plan on that, um, but it was fun. It was fun. It was a nice little little uh, interview that we did with him, and Derek was pretty cool because he at that weekend he brought uh, some he brought uh, the episodes of uh, Human Error Part One and Two from Animated Part Two had not debuted yet in the world, so we got to see it a day before the rest of the world. I think the next day was played on Cartoon Network, so that was pretty cool. And what was even more interesting, and what kind of also led to me digging this up, was um, he brought for us uh, two shorts from Transformers Animated that were only shown at TFCon, and then a month later were shown at BotCon 2009. And so what was cool about that is just recently that lost media that was only found on thumb drives of people who worked on Transformers Animated has finally surfaced, and those were those two segments, the Starscream's Fantasy and Logo. So we're also, you know, we had that, that was part of the interview too, where we talked quickly about him bringing that, and that being a big debut and everything. So pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff. So just stay tuned for that. It's a small little t eight to 10 minute segment, nothing really too mind boggling, but just nice to see, you know, Derek laughing, having a good time. And just being at a Transformer convention, TFCon was very small back then especially, so just being able to like do some shopping and everything. So here's me and Derek Wyatt just shooting the slag, like I say, back and forth and just talking Transformers. Enjoy. Are you enjoying the show though? Uh, it's great. I love it. What do you like the most, like the most so far from the <laughs> You mean since I got here on the plane, got to the hotel, checked in, and came here and like had a Coke? And the, and I looked at some of the toys. I like the toys the best, I guess. Um, I like seeing the big plastic tubs full of little baggies of toys. It reminds me of going to the flea market when I was a kid and looking for, you know, trying to root around for good stuff. I saw, um, met Mr. Alex Milne. Oh, yes. Uh, very talented man, yes. Excellent. And that's it. That's all that's happened. That has brought us right up till now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Except I gave away your drawing of Rodimus. That yeah, was it. Uh, <laughs> I know. We sold the last Rodimus. We're going to be doing the, um, one of the panels you're bringing two episodes, two episodes that you're bringing to Oh, um, I brought Human Error Part 1 and Human Error Part 2. You brought Human Error Part 1 and 2. And I brought some of the little shorts we did. Are any new shorts that haven't been shown? Yes, oh, I think okay. so. I think we've got, um, uh, I'm going to make up the names because I can't remember them. I think we have uh, Starstream's Big Day Out. Okay. And um, uh, I don't know what other ones haven't been shown yet. Uh, Lugnut and Blitzwing hang out in the forest. 
and yeah. Yes, all the uh, stuff that was animated by the spectacular Studio 4C in Japan. Is this my heart rate? Oh yeah, it's your heart rate. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm palpitating. So let me, let me just ask some basic questions. I mean, you said in the past that you like uh, Swindle. One of your favorite characters. Yeah. Uh, any other favorite characters, especially of school? Don't, don't uh, basic. Well, I, my, my top favorites are have always been uh, Swindle, Ratbat, Galvatron, and Waspinator. Okay. Those are just my off-the-cuff top okay, favorites. Yes. Like That's why I wanted... I just, you know, was really glad to get him in the show. Okay. Really exciting to do. Um, I like uh, other weird guys, kind of like Blot, I really like. Uh, I like some of the weird Japanese characters, like Grandis, oh, yeah. Sky Gary. You can't have a better name than Sky Gary. You know, it's like no American could make a name as cool as that. <laughs> as well they should, you know. You need to have some to balance them out. Oh, I uh, hate Beachcomber. <laughs> Oh, Hot Rod? I don't mind Hot Rod. I, I, I hate him. He's a totally, yeah, he's a totally worthless, useless hippie. And uh, there we, we, a great scene got cut in the beginning of uh, Transwarp, where he met Shockwave for the first time, which was so good. And yeah, he's then it got cut. Yeah, it, it was so good. And we we actually did the voice record, and Tom Kenny did his voice, and he did it like, you know, it's like, hey, man, what's going on? Why were you wearing a Decepticon symbol a minute ago? Yeah, yeah. He's very slackery, yeah. Um. <laughs> There's some excitement in the crowd. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> like a Dinobot in a bag or something. Is <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Don't put their. Anyway, yeah. So, so you don't like Beachcomber? No, Beachcomber. I always hated Beachcomber. Oh, hmm. I I mean, I'm really partial. Don't be partial. I I don't think. Okay, I don't think. I don't think that uh, SUV is our best episode, but it might be our favorite, my favorite, because because of Swindle. You know, just just getting him in there and and having. Yeah. Well, he was alive. He's he alive. just he's go, totally well, fine. That's what I tell myself every yeah. night. So. Um, but yeah, having having Fred Willard do the voice and getting my favorite character of all time in the show was was awesome. Did you push to get yeah, I did. I had to. In some ways, I had to. Yes. Well, it, it's not that. It's just like everybody was like, "Who the hell is that? Why do we care about him?" Yeah, and I was like, "Well, because." Yeah, but not really. You know, yeah, sometimes I don't appreciate when they use a name and it has no reflection of the... That's, that's usually how has you know, how can how can you have a... What was it, like a, a Corvette with one eyeball be swindled? Oh, that's yeah, just well, like, what? That's well, not right. Well, these things happen, I guess. So, so yeah, the, um, I had to... I really had to... Um, Mm, use my gravitas to uh, to get that character in. Yeah, he was in, and then uh, Waspinator actually happened by luck, which was awesome because uh, Marty had originally wanted to use Cliffjumper as the fall guy and have him go to prison and become crazy, but but he would have just been you know messed up Cliffjumper. Yeah, but but uh, once again Hasbro said they didn't really want that character used that way, and and Marty's like, well, hey, what about Wasp? We could use. Uh, make him into a Bumblebee clone and then progress the story. It's cool because he got a really nice story arc out of that. So, yes. So much. Oh. Well, yeah. We there's. It seems like every season Black Rackney's role gets limited. You know, it always starts out with this kind of grandiose arc and then kind of gets gets snipped down to one episode. But we were supposed to see more of her origin, how she became, you know, how she went over to the Decepticon side, and how how that related to uh, to you know Megatron and Blitzwing and other things that hopefully maybe they can do a comic of someday or. Oh yeah. 
some stuff that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. That hasn't been leaked at all. Well, mm, I can't remember what got leaked out there. We know about Grandis, right? We know yeah, Grandis so is coming. That was, that was on your, on your, uh, your oh, I did that. Yeah. yeah did that. <laughs> oh, I'm silly. So, so, like, I, mean, I doubt Botanic is going to be there. Well, who knows? Well, Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, too soon. <laughs> is this on backwards now, or am I alright? You're good, you're good. Okay. Um, but, do you know uh, okay, let me think. Who else? Yes, there are definitely characters. Hey, thanks. There are definitely characters that we haven't seen yet that are going to have some screen time. Oh, some big ones, actually. Yes. Oh, really? Um, the more I think about it, the more excited I'm getting uh, about it. Yeah, it's like. Uh, yes. Right. Well, Grandis is one of those because he was yeah. in the sumo He's division. In the sumo division. Um, Star Saber, the Diatlas, all those wacky uh, Japanese. Diatlas, we did a full model of him. Yeah, I, I don't know if he, he might be like waving or something in the background. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't have much of a big part. Um, uh, Gary is in there a little bit too. He has a full body. Um, um, Springer was only a head, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple more, I think, but I can't. Yeah. Question I'll, I'll just ask is, um, outside of animated, what is probably your, uh, your favorite Transformers series? Oh, um... And don't, don't, don't worry about hurting people. Oh, okay. Uh, I think... I think I was most pleased and surprised by Beast Wars, because I was... Uh, really taken aback when it, when it debuted and, and wasn't sure about it. That, yet, the, you know, the CG is... It's a little primitive now, but like the stories and the characters are really yes. good, really, really nice. Well, a lot I, of people, a lot of people really enjoy the, the turn. It was, it was, it was not so much that it was a Transformers series, but it was a science fiction. Series. Yeah, it was great too. That's great character pieces, and I, I like for, for visual stylings, I really like Beast Machines, just because I, you know, the, you watch animated, and there's a lot of Beast Machines, Cybertron, in our Cybertron. Yeah, of course. It's yeah, um, course. yeah, the it's got all the little. Um, neon lights and it's all blue. It looks it looks a lot like the these machines. If you want yeah, to call them that. yeah, but, but I really like the look of that series. It, they pushed they pushed the Transformers designs in a really weird way, but but they were well, cool. I like them. It works. Mm -hmm. You know, I think one thing about keeping a brand fresh is is always reinventing it. Mm -hmm. And you'll always have people that'll complain about big chins or whatnot. <laughs> what? Who? What people would possibly complain about that? You know, this is ridiculous. Work. But you know what? It's the same thing. They they all ate it, ate their foot in the end. Mm -hmm. They all love animated now, and we're kind of we're kind of sad to see it go for the time being. Who knows what the future will bring? I know. I have no comment about this future. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we'll take it from there, Derek. Um, it was great interviewing you. Oh, thank you. Have you on the show? So uh, thanks. I feel weird. I feel weird. This feels weird on my bald head. Does it?